We are not really going. <laughs> huh? I mean, as a matter of fact, when you die and you think of Krishna, an airplane is coming, but you can't see it. It can only be seen by those who have the divine vision, they can understand. Because there's, there are such cases where, where the divine is coming, is descending to restore, to rescue you, to rescue you from the divine, from the mundane plane. This is really something uh, very important, very special. <coughs> Time and space is a very limited conception. Krishna conscious is beyond time and space. Yeah. It's exactly there where God lives. And God lives beyond the imperfections. God lives beyond the confusions. God lives in the world of all. Means all is in the world of God. And we are all in the world of God, but we cannot see him because we think it is our world. We think it is my world. I'm trying to make the master, mastership. <coughs> you said no. You're not the master. You're the servant. So you have to become the servant of the servant of the servant and say, Jai, Ki Jai, I'm a servant of the servant. I'm not the master. Wow. You're not the master. This is very healthy. Because that's good because your mastership is very doubtful. But the master is your well wish. He has already planned your entire existence, but he wants to see your participation. He wants you he wants to see what you want also. If you say he always wants us to go back home, back to God. He always that's his priority, that's what he wants. <coughs> But do you want to? He wants you to go back to him. Do you want to go back to him? Well, the first thing you can do if you want to go back to him is send your money to him. <laughs> if you send your money to God, then you know you want to go to God. <laughs> so you say, I want to go to God, but I sent my money to the Bahamas to my private bank account for uh, safe, safety in the, uh, in the world beyond. You know, like some people, they, they dig the grave and then they put gold and silver inside huh, for the journey. Huh? So that, that the traveler has something for the journey. Other people say, no, this is energy. Actually, in, the, in South America, they put gold with the dead people to give blessings to make an offering to the earth. The earth has given the gold, now they're giving the, off the offering to the earth. That's how why they had. That's why the grave robbers always went there because they know oh, maybe we find some gold. I, I don't know what's happening with that. Only Krishna knows, but I think they get some karma by doing that. <laughs> the gold which was offered to Mother Earth. Anyhow, if you do get it, maybe use it for Krishna, maybe you're okay. Mm -hmm. But if you take it and then you want to enjoy it for yourself, mm -hmm. you see everything belongs to gold is never gone. Gold will always be there. Mm -hmm. So it's just a question of where it is. The grams and the, the every every little detail of God's creation is in, in some kind of transformation. But here we go, and it's all there. And you are also always there. Therefore, really nothing is lost. So why are you so eager to take it into your control, into your fist? Srila Siddhamar said, the ambitious person who wants to snatch God like, you know some people that catch a fly? Oh, now I got a fly here. Huh? So some people want to take God, they say, okay, no. Not with the hand, with the brain. Say, oh, I understood, this is God. And then when I open the hand, it's not. 
God. God doesn't want to be snatched by your might. He doesn't want to be caught. This is not, not within the scope of your possibilities. He just wants your love and he wants to give his love to you. As a matter of fact, he's always giving his love to you. Every day, every moment, he's giving his love to you. So much love. I think you should go to <coughs> Bulgaria with me. <coughs> yes. When? <laughs> now? That's a good question. When? <coughs> very soon. You can meet many very nice many people in Bulgaria. And maybe somebody in Bulgaria would like to come and join you and help you in, in your vision of Riyash. Oh. It's possible. We can think about that. Our, the love we are receiving from Krishna is so immense. It's so intense. Krishna has given himself in the form of a Paramatma. Krishna has given himself in the form of the holy name. He and the name is not different. So you can, you can dance with him. You can chant with him. You can... You can even call him up by telephone. Prabhupada said 108. You dial 108. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. 108 times 16. <laughs> and then you'll have a sure connection. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Rama, 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 Rama. So this is the, 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 the secret connection. And you know, Krishna and his name are not different. How can you understand that? Atasi Krishna Namati Nabavet Grayam in Vyai Sevan Mukhe Hijivado Swayame Vas Puratiyada. Atasi Krishna Namati. You cannot satisfy the Lord with any intellectual, sensual approach. <coughs> Studying, working, buying. He's not available to your eyes, ears. But if you render service to him in a very surrendered way, he can from within give you an understanding of what he is and what he wants. Well, that sounds like a beautiful promise, no? How is this promise? How is it going to manifest? Hmm? Ajahn Amrita has birthday today. We're celebrating for third time. Morning, noon, and night. Hmm? So... This is the, the, the secret of Krishna's identity. In Krishna is as much identical with his name as prana is identical with the life-sustaining air. You can experience it every time. We never think about it, we just breathe. But as soon as you start thinking about it, gratefulness comes in you. And you're receiving grace. <coughs> so that's Krishna. Krishna is the air. Krishna is the water. You can you can feel it, you can see it, you can if you want, if you want to open your mind, if you want to embrace the divine. <coughs> Krishna is as much identical with his, with his name as food quenches your hunger. Food satisfies your hunger. In the same way. Nobody keeps eating, eating, eating. No, you say, enough. I eat enough. 
For a few hours I ate enough. Because you're satisfied. So we are satisfied. Krishna's name gives us satisfaction. We get some, something like a free sample. <coughs> a free sample of the holy name. Hey, how much did they pay you for chanting? No, nobody chanted. Yeah. Why you chant? I don't know. It's nice. I heard about it. I like it. I mean, some people chant 40 years and they still chant. One time I was in Buri Maharaj's room and somebody asked him, you're chanting how many years now? He said, 80. And he said, what did you get from chanting? Pretty much was becoming silent. What did I get from chanting Hare Krishna? He said, I understood from my chanting that without the devotees, I'll be finished. Do you want something better than devotee association? Do you want something more tasteful than chanting with the devotees with Dhamma Do you want something more sweeter than all the prasadam the devotees are cooking? Sweet, salty, sour, whatever. You want something better than that? What do you want? You want you want something more beautiful than altars and temples and gardenings and everything? You want something more healthy than permaculture fields? People growing food lovingly for Mother Nature and for everybody to eat? What do you want? What else do you want? Krishna can give you anything. He can also intoxicate you if you want. There's so many intoxications out there. It's just endless. Endless of foolish intoxication. What the intoxications do? Well, it gives you this kind of feeling that, oh, now I'm special. A little special, quick, a little special, slow. Huh? Nothing. You just get a little special for a short moment and then become the secondary side effects, which are usually a problem. But Krishna tells you, if you want me, then you don't go for this or for this or for this or for this. See, he's telling us. Just like if you say a woman, I want to marry you. And then she's going to say, okay. But then you don't go after all the rest of the women. <laughs> oh, really? That's the only thing you are requesting me? <laughs> yes. You have to renounce all the rest if you want to have me. I mean, every woman is more or less like that, no? So why should Krishna not be like that? You know, he's the original supreme personality of God. He says, you want me, then you renounce all that. I mean, it doesn't mean you cannot get married. Don't think this is fanatical. And if you're married, you better work for your family and, and you get your experience in that field. But otherwise, <coughs> hmm? so Krishna says, you want me? So don't go and spoil your life and spoil the life of others. So many type of things, so many circumstances. I really wish to have my consciousness purified by the dust of the lotus feet of the devotees and hearing through my ear their wonderful sweet words of glorification of Krishna. All this is real, all this is sweet, all this is the best of the best. <coughs> so I don't know what else we are looking for, really. I know Maya is tough and you have many problems and this happens and that happens, but what more we are looking for in life? You touch somebody. And you like that person, you feel. Oh. And the person rubs you back. This rubbing of the skin gives a certain sensation. There's somebody who likes to rub me. Somebody loves me. Somebody cares for me. So, what more do you want? 
Oh, maybe you want to have a child. You want to get married to that person. It's also good. No problem with that. Otherwise, it's just like mother rubs the child all the time. That's the happiness of the child. Child is going, no, oh, and then mother goes, the little child. Oh, all problems is over. Huh? Because there was some touch, skin touch, but what is there? It is what Krishna has given. It is, it is so much. It is so, <laughs> so powerful. And that's on the physical level. What about the intellectual level? What about understanding when Krishna says, I'm not this body? Understanding when Krishna says, we are eternal spirit soul. What deep satisfaction can you get when eternal love is announced, universal love, and the Lord says, we are all the same, and you are all my parts and parcels, and you all belong to me, and you go, wow. And then he says, and I come as a little boy playing in Vrindavan. And everybody goes, what? The supreme powerhouse, cosmic reality of everything. Now he's coming as a little boy. Wait a second, wait a second. I think I got it wrong there. No, you didn't get it wrong. I like to come as a little boy. I like to play with you as boy and girls. I like to play with you carrying your slippers on my dad on my head. I like to play with you showing off when the demons come, hmm? come on, little demon. <coughs> what do you want here? <laughs> You're disturbing with them. <coughs> come here, come here. Oh, let me take you. Whee! This is more in there. And the demon goes, <laughs> And everybody says, Krishna, how did you do that? I don't know. This master came. He wanted to disturb my college boys, you know. Hmm? Krishna's having fun. <coughs> so, you can understand or you don't understand, it doesn't matter. <coughs> but Krishna is having fun. <coughs> and Krishna loves it. He loves it to play with his devotees. He also loves his devotees and the Chaitanya Lila to come and go with him and spread Krishna conscious every day. You know? Lord Krishna is there with Guru Deva Tulananda when he preaches and sings and dances. Lord Krishna is there when the devotees open new temple in Italy. Uh, yeah. Lord Krishna is there it's like his name, his prasadam, his, his message. Everything is there. It's, it's always there. Only you have to say, yes, my Lord, I want to be graceful to you. I want to do it the way you want it to be done. Not different the way you want it to be. That's the way I want it. What else? Dying. We have to learn the art of dying. We have to learn it before we reach there to die. Because if we didn't learn the art of dying, then we are dying in some kind of desperation, misery. We cannot accept that everything we worked for in the material world, we lose it when we die. But if you, if you work for Krishna, you're not going to lose anything. Because you know, if I le leave, it's still here. Krishna is still the enjoyer. Krishna is the eternal enjoyer, so you, you never lose anything. But while you have it for Krishna, you can <coughs> do wonderful things for Krishna. That's very auspicious. Imagine the wonderful places and the wonderful projects Krishna has given to us. To you. I'm not too old. I have no time. I go to a place for one day. Many times in one day I have to visit three places. Oh, what is that? <coughs> I cannot even sit down on a chair and already somebody calls me, go over here, look over here, do this, now come upstairs, now go out here, sit down, in a class, eat some food, get out. <laughs> so I'm not getting anything for myself. I mean, what the heck? It's, I, I'm enjoying it because it's Krishna's. I'm enjoying it because you have it. You can go there. You can live there, you can increase it, you can copy it, you can make another one somewhere else, you can make, a, make your home a temple. 
turn your home into Vin Goloka Vindavan, that's what Bhakti Vinod Taku said. I know, what's it? <coughs> Everywhere the people are waiting for Krishna. They're waiting for the devotees. Sometimes they know it, sometimes they don't know it, but actually they are. Look, so many devotees in Poland. So many. Not of the Vinda mission. We have not done much preaching there. But from other missions, there's so many devotees in Russia. Oh my God. So many missions are preaching in Russia. Hundreds and thousands of devotees. Amazing. I've heard there's sometimes festivals, 15,000 people come. That have, they have to be Mela organizers. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> Krishna is everywhere. Krishna, Krishna. When I heard that in Scandinavia, they, the, the Sami people called Krishna Radhanath and Radharani or his female counterpart Radhika. When I heard that, I say this is too much. The Sami people up there in the cold north. They are having Sanskrit names for the divinity, identical with the confidential places of Vrindavan. What's going on? Am I crazy? Or is our, are our history writers crazy? They have not identified clearly the Sanskrit connection of our languages. Why? Because it goes against the westernized idea that we, the Europeans, gave culture to the world. So if we admit that all the languages and all the roots coming from the Sanskrit, then the whole thing is blown. Then we all have to study India and the history of India, and that's the only thing which is important. Are you going to compare Parsival and the Nibelungen to the Mahabharat? No. And the Odyssey? Is that like with the, the, the great teachings of Lord Rama? No. And the Thousand and One Nights? Are they like the, like the scriptures of the Six Goswamis? No. So the Indian, Indian culture has so much to give, and in our Western world we're not paying attention. Because if we pay attention, the, the attention you have to give to the Vedas is submission. You have to be submissive. This is black and this is white. No. What do you mean? Is this black? And is this white? No. You're wrong. This is white and this is black. So now you accept it or you will be discharged. Suspicion leads to suspension. Okay? Our society, our Western society, has taught everybody to be suspicious. And in the spiritual content, in the spiritual content, this Western society has become suspended. Suspended, period. And how suspended? Ugh. They have become killers, robbers, and thieves. They say it's getting better. Not really. <coughs> Not really. Who told us his story? He came to told us he came to Barcelona as a young guy looking for oh let me find some valuable things. The first day he got there, they caught him and almost stabbed him and took, said, "Give me everything you have." And he said, "What I only have?" Then he said, "Oh, you don't have money. Sorry, we didn't mean it." <laughs> huh? So, <coughs> the nastiness in our system, the nastiness is very severe. And Prabhupada used to say the majority of the people in this world are innocent. It's true. We have to work against ignorance. We have to work against Tamaguna. And how do we do that? By showing the gifts Krishna has given to us, the beautiful gifts. 
Krishna take the gifts, please, to everyone. So many beautiful gifts the Lord has given to us. Let's share them with them. Tamaguna means I don't believe in any gifts. I think life has no meaning. And I need to get more of what I don't have. So let me take it from someone who has it, whether he likes it or not. All the time, Making money makes it irresponsible. You see, there's, we can distinguish, distinguish between different people. One says, I want to be happy at any cost. It doesn't matter how many people have to be tortured, <coughs> experience excruciating pains. I don't care. Killing them, I don't care, as long as I make money. And another one, he says, I want to be happy also, just like you. But I want to be happy without giving unnecessary pain to others. I want to be happy just by doing the things fairly. And then there's a the third person. The third person says, I also want to be happy, but I only want to be happy making others happy. And then there's a fourth one. He says, I don't want to be happy. I'm ready to sacrifice my happiness if that makes others happy and the Supreme Lord is satisfied. Wow. That is something outstanding. Those who renounce their happiness, their studies, their safety, their security, their this, their that. They renounce that for the sake of helping others, <coughs> for the sake of putting Hope into all the relationships. This is what I want. I want your grace, my Lord. I want your grace. I'm living by your grace. What my Lord gave to me, that grace is so un unlimitedly wonderful, that I can dance all day. I mean, the Buddhists here usually dance, no? They call it Mangal Arctic, five o'clock in the morning fever. <laughs> Not Saturday night fever. Or bumped out on alcohol. The Buddhists have started, if they do what Prabhupada says, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Lord Krishna opens the curtain and says, Mimi Jai Nityananda Hari Hari Bo, Gora Nityananda Hari Hari Bo. They chant. And I say nobody pays them for that. It's not a show. It could not last because there's nobody to pay for it. I don't know how much you're going to pay the wood for chanting. No way. And paying a devotee for service, well then it's not really service if he's getting paid for it. That's why Krishna's Bhagavad Gita is saying, loving devotional service. If you serve me with love, he's not interested in your service, he's interested in your love. The loving devotional, unconditional service. That is Bhakti Yoga. That is what makes you happy. That is what makes you chant and dance.
Then when you do this, Krishna eats your food. Oh, these people in Hungary, they cooked for me with so much love. Yes, 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 I will eat it. Krishna will eat it. And all becomes prasad. I mean, everybody becomes purified by the blessings. <laughs> so to express my gratefulness for this, I mean, if you say, some people say that life in the temple is not difficult, uh, is not easy. I agree with them. It's very, very difficult to live in community. It's very difficult to get married. It's very difficult to have children. Very difficult. So many problems. You better never get married and you never ever get a child. Only pain and problems you get and you never live in a temple is only problem. You agree with me? <laughs> hmm? You agree? I think you don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and that's you. You have three daughters, no? Two son and one daughter. Okay, two son and one daughter. So it is, it is not like that. It's very difficult to live in the temple, and it's the best place in the world to live. It's very difficult to get married, but it's the safest things to do if you want to have a nice family and you want to have nice kids. And it's very painful to get kids and lots of problems. That's the only way you get to get one of those sweet little souls and little bodies growing up in your arms. It's the only way you get it. So stop this nonsense. It's too difficult. It's too difficult. Shut up. It's too difficult. It's too difficult to love? No. Love means this. And I'm saying it. Surrender to Krishna, living in the temple, doing service all day, or get married uh, and having children. Why do I put that in one line? Because getting married and having children is also devotional service. Because your son is not going to pay you. Huh? You're going to do service and service and service. The husband is not going to pay you either. Well, maybe he's going to pay for all the expenses, but you don't say to the husband, okay, I marry you, but that's a $1,500 a month, please. Yes, <laughs> in my account, <laughs> with my credit card, not yours. <laughs> then it's then, then it, then it not it's finished, you know? So the whole thing is there. If you want something serious, then get it. If it's difficult to get, get it anyway. And if it's even more difficult to get, then get it anyway. <laughs> And if you don't want to get it, well, then you will get something else. And getting enlightenment means to get out of Tamaguna. You want to get out of Tamaguna? Well, then go the path of the light. Go the path of love. Because that's what Krishna says, the only thing which attracts him. I agree with him. Everybody agrees with him, but not when it comes to me giving. I agree with him when it comes to me taking. Oh, then I agree with Krishna. Therefore, Lord Jesus said that the man invests his money there where his heart is. If you want to go to Goloka Vendavan, so send your money there. You, you have a good chance you get there. But if you keep your money there for taking intoxication, for having a few girlfriends, for for, for all these things and having uh, exhibiting some wealth. You know, like sometimes the old people, no? Because they already white hair and everything. You, know. you see, this guy's finished already, you know? But then you see a golden chain, like real big, <laughs> fat golden chain. <laughs> and, and keeps the, 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 the skirt open. No? It's, it's, it's the white hair there. And a golden chain. No? And, and maybe, maybe a limousine. Also. And a big fat ring. And then he looks at the girls and says, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you laugh about this, but tell me, tell me, just go to any place where the rich people hang out. That's exactly what you see there. That is one hundred percent the story. It's all about love, you know. Everyone's looking for love, and they cannot get love, and they do all kinds of noise. Anyway, thank you for listening. It's a little late. It's not late. It's eight fifteen minutes. But any questions? Anything to say? Thirty years, but in Anita, she's our dancer. Actually, she is coming from Mexico to open a temple in Karlsruhe, the center of learning. Because she's been in the devotees almost 10 years in Mexico. She went to India and she met her life companion there. And let's see what it gets. Let's see what happens in Karlsruhe. She must have learned a lot because in Mexico you learn twice as quick as in any other place. Because living in Mexico City is twice as hard as any other place, so you also make advancement twice as much. So we should should pray for her to be able to do and reach out to the people there in the Bundesgerichtshof, the place of German judges that live there. Maybe she can turn some hearts there. We can get some rights for Mother Nature out of it. <laughs> because that's what we need. We need we need the rights for Mother Nature. And it has to be coming from the heart of the people, from the whole world. And not to agree with this is Tamaguna. And to agree with this is hope and light. One time I was arguing with one saintly person. I said, we need to make Vrindavan a world heritage song. And then he told me, that's not a good idea. I said, why not? Well, then we cannot build skyscrapers there. I said, oh, what the heck, your idea is here if you want to make skyscrapers here? What do we need skyscrapers? We want, we want to be sustainable. But anyway, this is the kind of thing, you know. Some people think, oh, let's keep our destructive society because we destroy here and 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 here so that we can make something very beautiful here. And that's mine. <laughs> and the people who live there, well, tough luck. That's what they say, tough luck. Hmm? So this is basically what you do. You go to Dubai. Have you seen those pictures of this futuristic thing? No? Oh, we are the Dubai people. And how much disaster they create some, somewhere else to do that? Don't figure it out. So we need rights of Mother Nature to protect Mother Nature from this kind of careless, uh, greedy proposals. Because when you don't have the scarce skyscrapers, you know, we can make Mother Nature very beautiful just with some muscles, a little landscaping, a little agriculture. A little. Now we have a good news. It's almost approved. And we're going to have a Vedic University in Mayapur. We're negotiating some 50 acres of land which belong to Sri Chaitanya Gunyamat by establishing the the University of Ancient Wisdom Branch, Mayapur, specially named Chaitanya University. Well, it's a possibility. It's a, it's, a, it's a new plan, but it's almost approved. Missing just maybe half a year, one year. Krishna knows, but it's already, the proposal has been made, the drawings have been made. It's just in between of that, the. Our Acharya, our president, Srila Bhakti Balabdita Maji, is in a state of samadhi. So he cannot talk, or he's not talking about anything. So he is kind of on hold because of that. Anyway, that's 
that's a kind of a place where we want to show the world how to live with the mother nature, how to respect the mother nature, how our ancient people respect it so much. You know, it's a, it's a chastisement for the modernized thinking. There was no plastic, there were no computer games, there were no chemical fertilizers, there were no pesticides, only 100 years ago. But there were nuts already. Crazy nuts. These Europeans, they were the craziest nuts doing harm all around the planet. They didn't need, they just had a few m metal weapons and they started giving trouble all around the, all the world. Because when the time was where everybody just had a spare, Mm -hmm. A spear and a, and, a, and, a, and a rock in the other hand. <laughs> then the, the, the conflicts, they could not really go to much bigger dimensions. <coughs> because you have a spear and you have a rock, I also can get a spear and I also can get a rock. But nowadays we have rocket ships and we have whatever detrimental, deathly, so-called advances for creating havoc anywhere <coughs> in the world. You see? That's the situation. So, you know something? <coughs> it's a very terrible situation, and it's very amazing. It is a time for awakening, like never before. Like never before was there a chance to bring to many people an awareness a reflection, a repenting, never. Before you could never communicate it. Before you could never really know what's going on in other places. Nowadays, by the will of God, we know almost everything going on everywhere, and we are almost more crazy than ever, but there's a great chance for a transition, for a shift, and I hope we may be part of that, if the Lord allows us, because otherwise we don't really have much to do. This is the shift we want to work for. And looking how wonderful the life is which Srila Prabhupada gave to us, we could say for us, the shift has already taken place. Now people are afraid. Oh, you want to make us all hurry. <laughs> oh, 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 very dangerous people. Careful, careful. They want to make you a Hare Krishna. And you will be dancing and like this. <laughs> and you will put color on your forehead. You will paint your head, your forehead. And you, and you will you will always put your hand into some bag and go Hare Krishna. <laughs> and they will tell you that God is everywhere. <laughs> Things like that. Careful with these guys. <laughs> I can understand them. They are so scared. I'm absolutely agreeable with them. Anything which shows up in big quantity, it's like Pegida or something. You know? it, it shows up. All of a sudden, there's a thousand people hating everybody. You know, you know ISIS, they want to kill people and invite people. Come, come, help us kill. And people give up their job to go and kill somewhere in Syria and, and, and in, in Iraq. And they're killing people. They don't even know who they are. It's, it's something very mad. But this is how mad the people are today. Really mad. So, so when we see people doing quickly something, what others do, and it looks different than what they did before, we are becoming scared, no? Oh, is this another big brainwash? Is this another <coughs> big institution? <laughs> but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says we have no temples. We don't need temples. We think and just go into everybody's house. That's why Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Temple said, my real business is to make a heart in every, a temple in everybody's heart. That's all we want to do. Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six. We don't have to show up as a big magnitude mass movement. We don't need that. <clears throat> 
It's not that the devotees wouldn't like masses to be devotees. They would like it, but the masses is the message is that it is quality and not quantity, and then you can actually make it become quantity if the quality and the substance is good. And then well, nobody will really worry about it. Oh, of course, you can bet that those who feel that this is a competition, they will always be screaming. And who thinks that Krishna consciousness is a competition? Very simple, the consumer society, the atheists, and maybe the fundamentalists who want to maintain the power of some kind. Fundamental Christians, fundamental Muslims, fundamental Jews. They may scream, but whatever. They always scream anyway. Any questions? Yes, Tarek. I have a question regarding offering anything to Gurudev. Is the say anything which is offered to him should be offered to, to Krishna first, or should that be prasadam? Either way, when you offer something to the Guru directly, then it is like. You are becoming the instrument of his guru. His guru is sending his remnants to him because he's pleased with him. But then he may say, hey, 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 you have not made an offering to the deities, make an offering on the altar first. So he may direct it this way or that way. Either way is correct. There's two ty types of worship, Archana Khan, Archana Padati. In Arjuna Padati, you do the puja by asking your guru to do it on your behalf. In Arjuna Khan, you do the puja in the name of your guru. But in the end, they're the same. <coughs> but we should never think that we can worship Krishna really ignoring the devotees, ignoring the guru. That's not right. So therefore, when you take the, you say, what about the Guru? Well, when you go to the altar, the Guru is also there. So if he's sitting there, why not go directly to him? So in, in this way, but then it depends whether you follow Archana Khan or Archana Padati. 